There's something unbelievable that is happening in West African countries, specifically the Sahel countries, that is Mali, Niger, and Burkina Faso. And this could sound unbelievable, but it's true. Imagine one of the poorest countries in Africa standing up and saying, we have got this, we don't need your help. That's exactly what Burkina Faso is doing. This small landlocked nation just paid off a jaw-dropping 4.7 billion in debt. And they did all this without borrowing a single dollar from the West. No International Monetary Fund, which is the IMF, no World Bank Rescue Plan, nothing. But here's the thing. Burkina Faso isn't exactly the country you would expect to pull off something like this. It's often dismissed as one of Africa's most vulnerable nations, dealing with political instability, insurgent attacks, and economic challenges. Yet just recently, the Prime Minister, Dr. Apolline al Chame, announced that they had cleared their domestic debt and the world has taken notice of this. How did they do it? It's simply a mix of bold leadership a dash of ingenuity and a strong belief in their people. Instead of turning to the usual Western financial institutions, Burkina Faso looked inward. The government issued bonds to local investors, the, the ordinary citizens, businesses, and banks who believed in the country's vision. And you know what? It has worked. This wasn't just about paying off debt. It was a statement, a declaration of financial independence in a region that's often portrayed as dependent on aid. For decades, the narrative around African nations has been stuck on this idea of needing help to survive. Burkina Faso is saying, no, we can do this ourselves. Now, of course, this wasn't easy. The country is facing serious security threats from militant groups, and its economy is still fragile. But by tapping into a growing sense of national pride and making smart use of local markets, Burkina Faso pulled off something extraordinary. The real question isn't just about how they did it. It's what this means for the rest of Africa. Could this be a blueprint for other nations to follow? Could we finally see a shift in how Africa handles its own future? Now, we have to break this down. The leadership in Burkina Faso started by promoting physical discipline. They, they made it clear that they were serious about cutting unnecessary spending and focusing on big, game-changing projects. This made local investors feel more confident. For the first time in a long time, people believed that their government had a real plan. And this uh, wasn't just about the money. It was about flipping the script. For years, countries like Burkina Faso were told they couldn't survive without help from the West. But this strategy was about saying, we don't need you. We have got what we need right here at home. Local investors started buying government bonds and suddenly, the country wasn't just paying off its debts. It was rewriting its own story. Now, let's talk about one of the most impressive parts of this whole thing. Burkina Faso pulled this off in the middle of a crisis. The country has been dealing with major security threats from militant groups in the Sahel region. And political instability has made things even tougher. In most places, that kind of chaos could send investors running for hills. But in Burkina Faso, investors stayed. Surprising, right? Why? Transparency. The government didn't just ask for money. They showed people exactly how it would be used. They also leveraged their natural resources, especially gold. You know, Burkina Faso is a major player in Africa's gold market and the government used revenue from mining to back its bonds. This gave investors an extra sense of security, knowing that there were real, tangible resources behind their investments. And it wasn't just about the government. The private sector played a huge role as well. Businesses and banks stepped up, buying bonds and funding infrastructure projects. These partnerships weren't just good for the government, they were good for the economy too. When local businesses invested in things like roads, power plants, it created jobs and boosted growth. Everybody won, right? Burkina Faso also got creative with its financial tools. They introduced new options like bond auctions, which made it easier for small businesses and even individuals to get involved. This wasn't just about the big players. Everyone had a chance to be part of this solution. But Burkina Faso was facing a tough choice. Imagine owning 4.7 billion of debt, so massive that it could cripple a country for decades. The government wasn't just trying to balance the books. It was planning something bigger something revolutionary. This wasn't about survival. 
It was about creating a future where Burkina Faso would thrive on its own terms without begging for help. Here's the thing. The country didn't just shuffle numbers around or cut spending to pay down the debt. Instead, it asked the bold question. What if we could turn this challenge into an opportunity? So they go to work. Burkina Faso focused on what economics like to call infrastructure investments. But in simple terms, this means building stuff. Roads, bridges, energy grids, and facilities to mine resources. These are things you and I might not think about every day, but they are the backbone of any economy. Without them, businesses cannot grow, goods cannot move, and investors don't show up. The government knew this. So, take transport as an example. If farmers can't get their crops to markets or businesses can't move goods across borders, the economy stars. Burkina Faso invested heavily in roads and logistic systems to fix this. Then came energy. Reliable electricity isn't just about keeping the lights on. It powers factories, schools, and even small businesses. So, they expanded renewable energy projects, tapping into their abundant solar resources. Mining was just another focus, as the country is rich in gold and other minerals. By developing this sector responsibly, they created jobs and boosted exports. But here's where it gets really interesting. These projects weren't just about making life better at home. Burkina Faso was also trying to send a message to the world. We are open for business. They wanted investors to see a stable growing economy in the heart of West Africa. And guess what? It's working. Confidence in the country's future grew. And with it, did also investments. All this is not just a clever strategy for paying off debt. It is a blueprint for independence, economic independence. The government's message was clear. We're not going to be struck in this cycle of borrowing from foreign lenders forever. Instead, we are going to build a future where we stand on our own feet. But here's the twist in this story. While Burkina Faso was busy transforming its economy, the West, the usual players like the European Union, weren't exactly cheering them on. After a military coup in 2022, Western nations cut off aid and slapped on sanctions, hoping to pressure the government into stepping down. It was a classic move. Use money and power to force compliance. But instead of crumbling, Burkina Faso turned inward. They didn't beg or back down. They looked to their people, their businesses, their markets, and found resilience. The newly formed alliance of Sahel states comprising of Burkina Faso, Mali, and Niger represents a significant political and economic shift in West Africa. Officially declared in July 2024, the RES aims to address grievances with traditional regional bodies like the African Union and ECOWAS. Member states criticize these organizations for failing to adequately support them against jihad insurgencies and for imposing sanctions that they argue primarily harm their populations. Additionally, they accuse ECOWAS of being overly influenced by foreign powers, particularly France. The RES focuses on regional self-reliance, including plans for a regional bank, a stabilization fund and efforts to attract foreign investment. It also represents itself as a platform for rejecting external interference, aligning with broader trends of African nations seeking autonomy and alternatives to post-colonial structures. While Russia has expressed support for this alliance, citing its goal of fostering African solutions to African problems, Western nations have raised concerns about this anti-Western stance and its potential to destabilize the nation further. Despite its bold aspirations, the RES faces significant challenges. Its member states are landlocked and heavily reliant on West African Economic and Monetary Union and the CFA franc, creating potential economic vulnerabilities. Moreover, the Sahel region struggles with severe security issues, including terrorism, organized crime, and humanitarian crisis. Critics warn that the RES could lead to authoritarian power consolidation, while supporters view it as a necessary step towards regional security and development. This alliance could mark a transformative moment for West Africa, potentially reshaping the region's geopolitical landscape and its approach to cooperation. However, its success would depend on how effectively it addresses internal and external pressures in the coming months.